Hey Logic listeners, I hope that y'all are having an absolutely wonderful day. I am filming this video a little bit in advance of when it's going to be published, but I am front-loading it for a reason, because this video talks about, among other things, asexual erasure and the idea that asexuals are not queer folks. It doesn't go into it very in-depth, and I have a video that I have planned coming out at a later date that will be talking about this idea and will be tackling it, but this is not the video to do that. This is a video about Pride and about Pride Month and about the feelings that at the very least I have as an ace person who has been gatekeeped and has been told that I am not queer. And those feelings aren't that great. I quite like Pride. I admire people who create content that revolves around Pride, and I think that Pride is good. But because of the experiences I have having gone through gatekeeping and having had to just sort of fight against gatekeeping in some spaces and in some contexts, I have frustrated feelings about Pride. And I didn't want people to go into this video completely blind because I do talk about those feelings. And also because I feel as though this video is imperfect, but I think that that in and of itself is an almost artistic reflection of how I feel about Pride. And I think that this video talks about things that are worth talking about. So I want this video to go up, but I also want people to come into it with the knowledge that this video talks about some stuff, and this video talks about hard topics for a lot of people, especially for people who, in realizing that they were asexual, started to realize that they weren't broken, and started to be able to develop a healthier sense of self, because as an asexual person, that's what happened to me. And that's part of the reason why I quite like Pride, because I am proud of the fact that I am asexual. I am proud of the fact that I am biromantic. And for me, those things do go hand in hand. And I talk about a whole bunch of different things in this video, and honestly, I hope that y'all really enjoy it. That said, I'm gonna let you guys dive into the video, and just know that I'll see y'all around. I hope that you, at the end of the video, let me know what you think, and if you enjoy the video, if you feel like it resonates with you, that you do share it, and that if you're new to my channel, maybe even subscribe. Hey, so you said you wanted to come in today to discuss Pride. I know that as an asexual person, I can imagine you'd probably be pretty excited for Pride, right? I'm coming to therapy, and you think it's because I'm excited about something? Are you sure that, uh, that's the right judgment call to be making on this one, Chief? Oh, you see, that was my bad. I just sort of assumed that because, you know, asexuals are queer folks, that asexuals would be excited for Pride. And if that's not the case, that is genuinely my B, and I will wait to hear what you have to say about Pride and about your feelings about Pride. I appreciate that you're aware that asexuals are queer folks, and that presumably because asexuals are queer folks, they would sort of intristically fall under the LGBT umbrella, and also the fact that the greater umbrella, the LGBTQIA umbrella, explicitly includes asexuals by name, that they are part of this community. But you see, the thing is, um, there's some people who gatekeep and those people, I'm not going to say that they intentionally do this, but some of those people are very loud. Some of them have a little bit of influence, they have a little bit of respect, and because of that, people take them seriously, and thus there are some folks, I'm not even going to say a whole lot of folks, but there are some folks who say that asexuals do not belong in the LGBTQ community. And obviously, that is untrue. But, because of that, not all ace folks feel super comfortable in queer spaces, not all ace folks feel super comfortable in pride celebrations, and not all ace folks feel comfortable with a range of other aspects of pride. But that's a discussion for a different day. It's the day before pride. What do you mean this isn't the time or place for that conversation. This is exactly the place for that conversation. I think it's important that we have this conversation because there are a lot of people who feel similarly to you, and not all of whom are members of the ACE community specifically, 
And also because some of those folks are very quiet about their ambivalent feelings about pride. And you're over here, you're over here kind of taking a risk by beginning this conversation, but hopefully you're going to be bringing up intelligent points that people can understand and on some level maybe not agree with, but at the very least view as part of a greater problem. And hopefully this begins an important conversation about how to improve Pride spaces and make Pride something more easily accessible for all members of the LGBTQIA plus community. This is the time and place. This is a mental exercise brought to life that you're sharing with the whole world. And because of that, this is in fact the time and place for you to say your piece. Well, you aren't, you aren't wrong, so I guess I should start to talk a little bit about how I feel and why I feel the way that I feel about Pride. Because the thing is, I think the Pride's really important, and I think the Pride's really positive. I actually greatly admire Pride, and I know that not everyone in the ACE community feels the way that I feel, but part of the reason why I want to talk about Pride in the way that I want to talk about Pride is that I want to make Pride better, and I want to make it even more inclusive, and actually enable Pride organizers and Pride event planners to celebrate not only the commonly accepted members of the LGBTQIA plus community, but also members of the ace spectrum, people who are asexual, people who are aromantic, because the reality is both camps, both asexuals and aromantics, belong in LGBTQ plus spaces. We belong in queer spaces. We face struggles we are prejudiced against. There are a range of different reasons why we belong in this community, but there's also the fact that we are important voices who belong in this conversation. And the reality is we are often leading advocates for other communities, and there are a range of people in other communities who commonly and ferociously advocate for us as well. It really sucks that there are negative voices that are loud and that have influence, but those voices are far from the only ones, and I think it's important that a wider range of people be celebrated, be acknowledged, and be brought into these sorts of spaces. The things that you just said all make sense, and I'm glad that there is someone who is bringing these concerns to life and talking about this openly online. I understand that even though the reality is you're not alone in saying the things that you're saying, I understand that feeling like one of the first voices, or at the very least being willing to be louder and oftentimes more aggressive than other folks, that can bring with it a certain level of backlash. And it's cool that you're out here willing to say these things as loud loudly and as aggressively as you are. But now my question is, since you have all these feelings, if you were a pride organizer, if you were a pride space creator, what would you be doing in order to make manifest the things that you're talking about and in order to improve the conditions and create more healthy spaces? I'm going to start this off by saying that as an asexual online who is openly asexual, who is public about my sexuality, and who writes and talks about asexuality, I am an event creator and an event organizer. The live streams that I create where I talk about asexuality, even in really casual ways, are events. And the spaces that I create, my own community, my comment section, those are spaces for ace folks to be free and to feel open to express themselves and to talk about asexuality openly and courageously. Because the reality is, it is an act of courage. To talk about asexuality. There are a lot of social pressures that exist on even the most privileged asexuals, and among minoritized and marginalized asexuals even more so than just beyond asexuality and demisexuality or aromanticism or demiromanticism, there are so many different sorts of barriers that exist that inhibit us talking openly about our experiences. And one of the things that Pride Spaces and Pride Events should do is that there need to be Pride Events and Pride Spaces that celebrate all sorts of people and that are willing to be like, hey, if you are a closeted person, you are still welcome here. Let us know. We're not going to publish any photos or anything of you. And if you want to be in these spaces, if you want to attend these events, 
you can do so in confidence, and you can do so knowing that we are not going to reveal who you are. Another really important thing that can and should be done, and lots of places are already doing this, I don't want to imply that this is some sort of secret that uh, organizers and creators are not already doing, is that when there are spaces that are devoted to talking about the different sorts of LGBTQ communities and peoples, we explicitly search for aromantics and asexuals, and that they are included and that people from throughout the ace and arrow spectrums are included as well. Because we use these terms asexual and aromantic, but in actuality both of them exist along a spectrum. And someone who is demisexual like me might say that they are also asexual. They might use asexual and use it to mean a sort of umbrella term. Because I am demisexual, and I am biromantic. And I use asexual both because I feel as though I am asexual, because I am, and also because it is an umbrella term that applies to a very wide range of folks. As today's session comes to an end, I want to ask you for your closing thoughts on this topic. As tomorrow is the beginning of Pride Month, I know that this is far from the only time we're going to be talking about Pride Month. This is just a space for you to air how you feel and for you to hopefully find solidarity with other folks, but I do want to create a space wherein you can give us some more thoughts as we close. This is an important conversation, and it's not something that we're going to be able to intelligently and thoroughly have in just one day and in just one video. Pride is an important event, and celebrating Pride has saved and changed the lives of people all over the LGBTQIA plus spectrum. It's important that we acknowledge that, it's important that we celebrate it. Me saying what I'm saying is not in any way mocking or making light of that. It's pointing out that pride, as good as it is, can be improved, and that the LGBT community oftentimes is not that great towards accepting bisexual folks and towards accepting asexual folks. A lot of the people that I've spoken to, including bisexuals, who feel uncomfortable with pride and being in pride spaces are worried that even though they are members of the LGBTQIA plus community, they go into pride spaces with their significant others and people look at them and decide that they're not queer enough. People look at them and decide that they are just trying to get credibility or something, and that they're trying to gain some sort of popularity by pretending to be queer. These are things that heteroromantic ace folks have experienced, these are things that bisexuals have experienced, and these are things that people who are in the closet have experienced. And these problems are real, and they make pride difficult to celebrate and difficult to go through for a lot of queer people who deserve just as much solidarity and support as other people who don't have those same experiences, for a range of reasons. It's important that pride be as positive as it can be, and it's important that pride be as life-changing as it can be. And it is up to Pride event creators and Pride event organizers to do their part in all of this. And it's also up to asexual content creators and other queer content creators to talk about how we can improve Pride together. This is not in any way an attack on people who like Pride. This is not in any way saying that all asexuals feel this way. This is one asexual person who has been openly queer for several years and who is an aggressive and loud voice talking about his experiences with Pride and talking about how he thinks he can improve Pride and what can be done to make Pride better for a wider camp of people. And it is my hope that this video begins a compassionate and thorough conversation wherein people feel free to share their experiences with Pride, whether those experiences are negative, positive, somewhere in the middle, or something else altogether. Because the reality is, I myself admire Pride, I love Pride, and I'm happy that I live in a place in D.C. where I can openly celebrate Pride. But not everyone else is that lucky. And it's important to me, 
as a person, as an asexual, and as a queer human being, that I work to improve things for the other people, for the people who can't openly celebrate, for the people who look at pride and experience different memories, memories that aren't always positive. I want to play a part in making pride better. That's the purpose of this video, that's me talking about this, and it's also a way of for me to say that asexuals and aromantics belong in pride. And it's important that we remember that. It's important that be front and center in our minds. Especially if you are an asexual or you're an aromantic, or you're someone who's both and you're watching this and you have ambivalent feelings about pride. I hope that this video helps.